This video is being recorded multiple times and honestly this theme, this topic here is about curses and it. I tried getting this out around uh, Halloween and all that but honestly it got delayed and I had to redo it multiple times and it's really annoying. However, I'm doing this yet again because this is important. The church, other there's many places that do not talk about curses and why it's important and to be honest the only reason why I'm bringing this up is because it's not covered um, now to make this be relevant to your life and all that like is whether or not you've been cursed you're in contact with people who do witchcraft um, black magic specifically in regards to putting curses on other people I doubt anyone who's actually you know, I doubt the more popular people probably don't have to worry about this, but honestly, you never know. All right, my sources here will be uh, starting with the Wikipedia, and there will be a couple more. I want to say that there's a bit of a honorable mentions here, and I'll put them down below, but I won't really talk much here. Um, the rule of three, um, Wiccans and witches do talk about that. The simple fact is, excuse me, the simple explanation is um, whatever you do will come back on your head three times, whether it's good or bad. That's just a very brief summary. That the World May Know series is, they do a very good job on biblical translations and making you like these videos that they have done, and even though it's an older series. Um, it's interesting to see how things come to life with what they talk about. They don't really talk much specifically about curses, but an honorable mention there because of the good content and the fact that when they talk about God and their videos that include him, they do a very good job describing how God interacts with the other people. And it gives you an idea on how God's approach is with something very powerful. After all, God and Jesus both have used curses a few times. And it's interesting when you compare how God has used purses, uh, curses versus uh, other people. He uses it to achieve an objective without directly, with as minimal contact um, against others as possible from what it seems. I want to say that and also it's a very interesting how he used the snake on the pole um, where Moses made it to um, to actually go heal others so a curse was used to actually heal rather than to uh, corrupt to destroy to to cause pain and, and, and all of that and it's very interesting because it falls in line with with what a curse actually does now um, Jesus, with the fig tree, when he did curse it, he came back later, and him and his disciples, excuse me, his disciples pointed out to him, since they first noticed that, you know, the tree was basically wilted and pretty much dying or dead. We don't know the time passed. We don't know how much time that passed, um, and it could have been a couple hours, could have been a couple, uh, couple days, so who knows. But they passed on by, and they saw that it was practically dead. Uh, let's see what else here. Curses. Um, the last honorable mention happens, excuse me, there's two more. Um, Balaam was hired by uh, the king of Moab to curse the children of Israel. And as the story goes, he, God directly intervened, either directly contacting him or making it so that he could only divine sensing him. This is important because he was a diviner among other things and that's how he came about with uh, some of what he did. The Bible is not very clear on how he did his curses but it did specifically say that God intervened. Not in those words though but God specifically told him to go bless the children of Israel three separate times and it says repeatedly that 
when he told the king that he can only say what God has told him to say, which is incredibly interesting because he's not a man of God in any way, shape, or form. And it says that later on that he became a thorn in Israel's side and ended up uh, getting killed in a battle, which is very interesting. Also, afterwards, with his uh, donkey talking and keeping him directly alive, like, there's some very good stuff. Anyway, the last honorable mention happens to be um, The Witch's Invitation by uh, Carmen. Comments are disabled, and it's very good, and it's something that was in my past that I remember seeing, like, 20-plus years ago. So, I was a kid when I saw this, and it honestly scared me back then, but... <sighs> I do not know if it's real or if it's based on actual uh, real ex experience, but it's still got power and it's worth watching. Frankly, it's not like this is a any more of a dangerous topic than talking about electricity or, or machinery, but the thing is this isn't physical. And it's very unlikely to, you know, to run into anyone who's going to actually put a curse on you anyway because, you know, like, it's... People who are good at this, they get paid. They get sp paid specific jobs and all that. Like, chances are they're not going to waste time and energy on just anyone who cro they cross paths with. It's, it's it's a waste of time and energy because there is a lot of energy that is put into this. Also, there's a lot of time too. Some of this just takes preparation. All right, moving on here, starting with Wikipedia. The study of the forms of curses. I am directly reading from Wikipedia, by the way, and I'll mention my sources as I get to them. As of right now, this is Wikipedia. I'll just read it for word for word for the most part. <sighs> I need to back up here. What a curse actually is and what it's called. A curse is also called imprecation, malediction, hex, excretion, malison, Anathemia or anathema, I'm not sure which. Con, conmination is an expressed wish that some form of adversity or misfortune will befall or attach to one or more persons, like a group, a place, or an object. In particular, a curse may refer to such a wish or pronouncement made affected by a supernatural spiritual power, such as a god or a gods, a spirit or a natural force, or else as a kind of spell by magic. It references saying usually black magic here or witchcraft. Black magic has to do with specifically the intent to hurt others, and it's never used in any way, in any good, it's never used to any good extent or for any positive reason at all. It's only meant to, to hurt and to harm. <sighs> witchcraft can be very. Use, it can use natural elements. It can also go much deeper, and I am not trying to go that deep. I'm trying to keep it somewhat simple here. Maybe a little basic, but not too basic, or else there's no point in doing this. Mm. All right. In the latter sense, a curse may be also called a hex or a jink, jinx. In many belief systems, the curse itself or the accompanying ritual is considered to have some causality force in the result. To reverse or eliminate a curse is sometimes called removal or breaking as the spell has to be dispelled and has often required elaborate rituals or prayers. Um, it's got some good examples too, by the way. Moving on to the types here. And I want to say this is a bit of a side, um, a side point, but it is still relevant. The fact that spirits, if you're pulling power directly from spirits, it's tricky in the sense that uh, they themselves can be involved, um, especially if you're doing curses using your hands. Passing power through your hands in some ways is more potent because it's direct contact rather than through words. All right, types. The study of the forms of curses compromises a significant proportion of the study of both folk religion and folklore. I want to back up for a quick second. The very, uh, this is a side point here, and I kind of forgot about it, but I do want to bring this up. This is not directly curse-related, but 
the most of the time when someone would feel anything um anything where it very it's, it's it's got an ill feeling uh they feel sick to the stomach anything where it could indicate that there is something going on is it's been reported through uh, sexual intercourse where people put hands on that that person that has noticed the person who is feeling very uncomfortable who 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 notices that there is something wrong is usually having their hand having someone's hand put on them so that is not curse related but there's still power going from one person to the other and when you as far as where curses are concerned that is particularly devastating when it's direct skin on skin all right back to the types here for on wikipedia the deliberate attempt to levay curses is often part of the practice of magic in hindu culture the sage or rishi as it's called is believed to have the power to bless or to curse examples include a curse placed by rishi b h r i g u on king nahashu and the one placed by rishi davala all right special names for specific types of curses can be found in various cultures african-american hoodoo presents us with the jinx and cross conditions as well as a form of foot track magic which was used by ramandeep that's one word whereby cursed objects are laid in the path of victims and activated when walked over i suspect walked on by um but that's just me my thoughts middle eastern and mediterranean culture is the source of the belief of in the evil eye which may be the result of envy but or more rarely as is said to be the result of a deliberate curse in order to be protected from the evil eye a protection item is made from a dark blue circular glass with a circle of white around the dot black dot in the middle which is remnants of the human eye the size of the protective eye item may vary and it's interesting the fact that the protection is reminiscent of a human eye while there is the source of belief of an evil eye interesting also some of these are very some of these items are very beautiful but don't let them fool you you don't want to get anywhere near them also i want to say when it comes down to protective um devices there are such things as good luck charms and i want to say there's much much more i saw a picture on this uh Wiccan page that i follow and it's, it had quite a few different uh, examples of protective items and it was all the way from like rings and necklaces to uh bracelets and stuff and it was quite amazing and they talk there was quite a bit of talk about natural stones <laughs> that were used to very very interesting stuff all right back to the last the last type of magic talked about in different cultures german people including pennsylvania dutch speak in terms of hexing which is a german word for witchcraft and is a common hex in days past that was laid normally usually laid by a stable witch who caused milk cows to go dry and horses to go lame interesting well, just the fact that something like that would happen to go make, to, to go affect things on such a small scale. I don't know how big the scale ever got. I don't, I don't really know, but the fact that it's recorded here must mean there's some matter of importance for this. Now, the next, the next topic here would be the Bible. I mentioned some of that in the beginning already. God using this the bronze snake to go heal and it is very much like a curse because whoever looked upon it were healed the fact that God ended up cursing humanity which came about through the, the actions and explicit disobedience that right there is very interesting because as I surmised months and months ago either um what is evil is directly attached to the human body or it's something that the human body grows up with that is not directly a part of them 
when you look at how people live and you look and see the different types of people and like their lives and stuff, it's it's very clear that some people are affected very differently by you know what is good, what is bad, and any type of variation of that. Let's see. I already mentioned all the other ones, so I'm not going to repeat them. The Bible here. According to the Catholic Encyclopedia article, Cursing, the Bible depicts God cursing the serpent, the earth, and Cain. The interesting note about Cain is God put a curse on Cain, but not directly about him, but whoever would so take his life would get permanently cursed. Similarly, Noah curses Canaan, and Joshua curses the man who should rebuild the city of Jericho because it got destroyed and yeah he put curses on the foundation he specifically talks about you know like if someone would just start it they would and he explains about what would happen and then whoever would finish put building it this would also happen to them as well let me see here in the various books of the Hebrew Bible there are are a long list of curses against transgressors of the law, which is found in Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 27. The ten plagues of Egypt preceding the Ten Commandments can be seen as curses cast from the rods of Aaron and Moses acting on instruction from God of Israel. It's interesting to note that those were specifically activated. But beyond that, it is assumed and believed that they were very quick that these curses were very quick, with the exception of uh, the death of the newborn, of the death of the of uh, the firstborn, excuse me, where that happened at night, and that was specifically tied to the angel of death, which I think is partly where the Grim Reaper could come from. Uh, side comment. Um, in order to enable the enthralled to come free from the yoke of enforced serfdom, slavery, and the like. So curses used to show it's it's a twofold here. It's used to and yes, it is used to show that God did exist and had power back then, but it was also used to uh show just how much more powerful he was compared to the other gods that uh that the uh, that were worshipped back there back then in Egypt. It is, I believe, two of the curses were replicated. The one with um, the blood, the, the the water turning into blood, and then with um, the gnats, and I think that's it. There could have been another one. I'm not sure off the top of my head, but it's interesting because the, the, the plagues on Egypt were actually replicated by the magicians and the wise men who were with Pharaoh. Not all, just like a, like three, I think three at the very most. Uh, yeah, New Testament, Christ cursed the barren fig tree. Oh, barren fig tree. That's the reason why he cursed it. He cursed it because it 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 was there. It was it should have been producing fruit, but it wasn't. <sighs> okay, it goes on here. Pronounces his denunciation of woe against incredulous cities. Uh, found in Matthew, against the rich and the worldly, the scribes and the Pharisees, and foretells awful malediction that is to come upon the damned, which is found in Matthew. The word curse is also applied to the victim of expiation for sin, found in Galatians, to sins, temporal and eternal, which is found in Genesis and Matthew. You can find all of this under that whole Bible part here in Wikipedia, curses. All of this will be down below. Egyptians and mummies. 